Okay, so this is an anonymous study that was done in the last couple of weeks. Um, this is the images showing here are of the uh, colon. So on the left, there's the camera pointing sort of towards the direction of travel, and on the right is the picture pointing um, backwards, so that we can show how how the images look when the camera is moving. And I think a really good thing about this test is that patients who have it come into an outpatient setting, swallow the capsule, and then go home. There's none of the having to come up to um, an endoscopy suite, the feelings of vulnerability, having to get un undressed and wear a gown, uh, having to have any sort of uh, intrusive tests or examinations, which some patients feel having to have colonoscopies, especially if they have to have colonoscopies relatively frequently if they've got underlying uh, health problems that require regular colonoscopy. So th th this is really is a, a step forward in patient-centred, patient-friendly investigations of the colon. So the, the pilot is designed to answer some very simple questions, which is can we uh, use a camera in a capsule to investigate patients who, are, who a GP is concerned may have cancer? Um, and patients go to their GP for all manner of reasons, and some of the symptoms that patients may describe may make a GP think actually I'm worried about bowel cancer and I want to get this investigated. So what a GP would then do, or many GPs would then check a, a stool test looking for blood. And based on the level of blood tests and the level of the GP's based on the, level, on the level of the blood in the stool and the level of the GP's concern, they will then refer in to a hospital as a fast track referral. And that fast track referral we have to do something within two weeks and we have to treat the patient within 62 days of that referral starting and that's the basis of fast track referrals to exclude cancer and for cancer treatments in the UK or certainly in England. Can you just talk me through what's so special about it? Well it's a, it's a, it's a fairly, it's a fairly a neat piece of, piece of kit really. So the capsule's got two cameras, uh, one at either end, so you know forward and aft, uh, and as it travels through the entire intestine it's taking pictures and each individual camera is taking pictures independently. And what's particularly neat about this one is that as the camera travels faster, so it speeds up taking pictures so that it doesn't miss anything. And likewise, if it travels more slowly, then the frame rate changes and goes down so that it saves power, so that it can take more pictures and so that the battery doesn't um, die prematurely. Because the battery life of this is about 10 hours, so we have to make sure that we optimise the opportunity to get all the pictures we can of the intestine. Can you just talk about to me the difference this makes compared to what you were doing before? So in, traditionally, someone who has those symptoms being referred would have either a colonoscopy or they would have a CT scan of the colon. So a colonoscopy, many people will know, involves taking bowel preparation to cleanse the bowel, um, changing diet, coming up for a test, um, and then have an uh, in, intrusive examination under sedation or with Entonox. Uh, and after that test, then that patient would, would, would have an answer straight away. Um, but there are risks involved with that, and um, being in hospital uh, and having a camera inserted is, can, can be uncomfortable. So some, some patients would prefer an alternative. The, the, the alternative to the colonoscopy was a CT scan. The CT colon's, again, very good for excluding cancer and large precancerous polyps. So it's, it's a less... Um, it's, 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 a, it's a less significant form of bowel preparation that's required for the CT scan. A small pipe is put up into the bottom, the bowel inflated with carbon dioxide, and the patient goes into a CT scanner. And, 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 and so uh, images can be obtained of the large intestine to know whether there are any growths that then would need further procedures such as a colonoscopy. And so the place of this capsule here could really be to... Um, to make to make a to make an assessment of the person's colon before deciding whether they need any other intervention. Now, can we use this camera so that patients don't need a colonoscopy? Can we use this camera so that if patients have a finding on that colonoscopy, then we signpost them to the to the correct place straight away? So if they have lots and lots of polyps or large polyps, then we can go okay. We identify that that patient may need a longer procedure with a specialist who does much more advanced polyps. That's this person on this date, and that would save a lot of time and prevent patients having to come back for multiple appointments 
um, leading to that therapeutic procedure. And we're a couple of weeks in. Um, for you personally, what sort of difference have you made to this? So I think that the, the camera images are brilliant. We are, we, are, we are getting really good bowel cleansing. So the, the bowel cleansing and, and the way that we're doing it is, is achieving good results. And all of the cameras so far have led to a complete study. So the camera has travelled through and it's come out. And that means that we've had a full colon assessment. Um, I would say that a significant number of those that we've done have had to have a colonoscopy for polyps that were identified um, and or other findings which are relevant to that patient's presenting symptom. So we've, I would say, helped by um, providing information ahead of a procedure that would then enable the person doing the procedure to have a very clear idea before they start doing the procedure what they're expecting to find and, and also uh, there are several patients that haven't had to have any procedure um, other than the capsule colonoscopy. Probably a stupid question, are the capsules reusable? They're not um, and that's main, that, there are many reasons for that but that once they've passed through the body they're ditched. So there's no, uh, that's what I was wondering, there's no, um, uh, people aren't you know, having to wait and give the, <laughs> give the capsule back to you at any time. No, it's a, essentially it's a slave unit. You know, it travels through and it's taking pictures and it's transmitting them. So it doesn't need to be retrieved because all the information is stored on a portable device that the patient wears for the period of the study. And, and the, the portable device it is, is receiving all those images and it's stacking those images so that when the data recorder is connected up to a computer that has a, the appropriate software, all of those images can be put together in a video and examined by someone that's been specially trained. So the way, the way this works is uh, there's a um, small data recorder um, about the size of, you know, for want of a packet of crisps, that kind of size, but obviously the square shape, uh, which they wear in a, in a holster around their, around their shoulder and it hangs down just over, uh, over, over, over their hip um, and that receives all the signals from the capsule as it's travelling through um, and nothing else is required uh, other than that and we make the patients drink boosters during the procedure of the study to propel the the camera along um, so that it doesn't get held up anywhere and you don't you're not st sitting staring at one thing for a long time um, the boosters help to propel the colon capsule through the bowel so it goes through the stomach it goes through the small intestine then goes into the large intestine uh, and then passes out of the body into the toilet not retrieved and then the the patient can bring the data recorder back to the hospital and that's the study complete.